Okay. okay, hi and welcome everybody. This is the Motivic Geometry Seminar. And today we have Hana Jia Kong who will talk about the Motivic Chao T structure. Please, Hana. Okay. Okay, thank you for the invitation. I'm very happy to give a talk here. So today I'm going to talk about this Motivic Chao T structure story. This is joint work with um, Tom Bachman, Guo Zheng Wang, and Zhou Li Shi. I will start with some basic definitions and uh, some backgrounds. In particular, I will introduce the previous C-Motivic result by Gilgay Wangxi. And then I will talk about our main theorem. Our main theorem is a generalization of uh, this C-Motivic result by Gilgay Wangxi. To prove our theorem, we define the motivic child T structure. I will talk about, then talk about the definition of that T structure, the properties of that T structure, and also give a sketch of the proof. And lastly, I will talk about how this applies to computations. And in particular, I will look at the R motivic case. So if you have any questions, please feel free to speak up and ask or type that in chat. Uh, I will keep an eye on now what's happening in chat. So um, yeah, so the first part is the background and also this GWX result. Since the main concept of this talk is a child T structure, let me start with the definition of T structure. And here is the definition. So the C here, this square C here is a triangul triangulated category. T structure can be defined on triangulated categories. And the data in the T structure is first, we have a pair of four subcategories, C greater or equal to zero and C small or equal to zero. And they satisfy the following axioms. So first, first we require that the C greater or equal to zero part, it is closed under a plus one translation and the C small or equal to zero part, it is closed on the negative one translation. That's the first requirement. And the second one is that if we take anything in C greater or equal to zero, any object in this piece and map that into anything in the negative one translation of C small equal to zero, then the home set is always trivial. So that's a second requirement. And the third, um, the third uh, axiom is that for any object in C, we can put that in between a distinguished triangle Y to X to Z to suspension uh, translation of X. And this Y is in greater or equal to zero part, Z is in the negative one translation of smaller equal to zero part. So this is for triangulated category. And uh, we can also define that on stable infinity category. And the definition is um, because a stable infinity category, if you look at its homotopy category, it is triangulated. So the definition is by passing to the homotopy category of a stable infinity category. And a familiar example here is the Posnikov T structure on the classical stable homotopy category. Um, the definition of the child T structure, this Posnikov child T, Posnikov T structure is that it's the greater equal to zero part uh, spectra whose uh, homotopy groups are concentrated in degree greater or equal to zero or the connective spectra. And the small equal to zero part similarly, that is things whose homotopy groups concentrated in smaller, smaller equal to zero part or the co-connected things. Yeah, and um, yeah, it's maybe I should mention that um, the intersection of the greater equal to zero part and smaller equal to zero part, that is what we call the heart of the T structure. In this case, that is equivalent to the modules the category of Z modules as an abelian category. Okay, so this is a definition of T structure. And next let's have a look at the main category of interest in this talk. So that is the motivic stable homotopy category. And the notation is um, SH of K. 
This is the Motivex stable homotopy category over base field K. So the way I think of it is, I think of it as an enlargement of the classical stable homotopy category. There are more things in this Motivex category. There are topological things as well as um, algebraic geometric things. And for example, the spheres in this category, they're bigraded. So you have the union sphere uh, denoted by this bold phase one, and it is uh, uh, it has by grading zero zero. This is a tensor unit, and um, the there are two kinds of circles. So first, the more uh, topological circle, the simplicial circle, it is in by degree one zero, and also the state circle this more algebra geometric circle, it is in by degree one, one. And this is a suspension spectrum of the alpha line minus zero. And there's a nice mesh product on this category. So by smashing all these uh, basic circles, you get or by graded sphere. So we have by graded sphere. And of course, we want to ask this question that is um, how to compute or how much can we compute the bi-graded homotopy groups? There are different uh, computational methods to attack this question. So first, um, there is a computational method called effective spectral sequence, or effective slice spectral sequence, and work by uh, running Spetsware, Cosware, they computed over general base field whose characteristic is not to, they compute the effective spectral sequence for, for the motivic sphere um, and compute its one line. And another thing that is a motivic uh, analog of something we have classical, we have the motivic atom spectral sequence. So um, the motivic atom spectral sequence, there are a lot of names here because to compute the motivic atom spectral sequence, you need to, for example, its E2 page depends on knowing the cohomology of a point as well as a motivic thin rod algebra. And that is different if you work in different base field. So the names I listed here, they're working over base field of complex numbers, base field of uh, real numbers, and also finite base field. Um, and this motivic atoms spectral sequence, it is, uh, it is more related to this talk. I will talk more about it later. In general, the motivic atom spectral sequence, it is hard to compute just like in the classical case. And the reason is that though, though it's E2 page is some, um, it's E2 page is an X, so if we know what Steenrod algebra is, and if we know what cohomology of a point is, we can carry out that computation that's purely algebraic. But to analyze the differentials there, there's some geometric information involved. So um, in general, it's hard to compute the differential in atom spectral sequence or, or motivic atom spectral sequence. And there is a, a method which helps with analyzing atom spectral sequence differentials. And this is this method uh, proved by Gilgay Wang Shi. And the statement is uh, the following. So they look at when the base field is complex numbers, and they showed that there is an equivalence of infinity categories between this uh, cellular module category and this stable category. And here is what these notation means. So one with a hat, it is a p-completed sphere. And this one with a hat over tau, it is cofab of tau. And tau is a map from the suspension zero negative one of the motivic sphere to the motivic sphere. Um, this cofab of tau object, it is E infinity. So it makes sense to talk about its module category. And the right-hand side, um, this stable category, it is um, Harvey's stable category. So I think of it as um, almost derived 
category, but you have certain compactness. And BP here, it is uh, P completed uh, from Peterson spectra. So this, uh, this, this result, why I call it an algebraicity result, this is because the left-hand side um, of this equivalence, this is something topological, but by this equivalence, they show that it can actually be identified with some algebraic category, some form of derived category of an abelian category. And that's why this is called algebraicity result, an algebraicity result. And here is how this algebraicity result helps with Adams differential analyzing. So the equivalence is um, this category with this stable category. And the, oh, yeah. and the picture, the diagram they look at or the map GWX looks at is this uh, map between atom spectral sequences. So we look at the atom spectral sequence of the motivic sphere maps to the atom spectra sequence of cofiber of tau. So as I just said, the differentials are hard to analyze here on the left-hand side, but it is easier to compute on the right-hand side. The reason is that because we have this equivalence, we can translate this atom spectra sequence under this equivalence to some atoms types spectral sequence in this algebraic category. So we translate that to a Adams type spectral sequence for BP2 star BP in this stable category. And um, it turns out that this spectral sequence is the algebraic noise code spectral sequence. But nevertheless, this is some here, this is some algebraic spectral sequence. So it's computation are relatively easy. Um, it can actually be computed by computer programs. So after we compute the, or computers compute the differentials and um, everything here, we can translate that back to the atom spectral sequence of cofiber of tau, and then pull that back to the atom spectral sequence differential information for the motivic sphere. So this is how um, Gyoge Wangshu, they, the application of the Gyoge Wangshu e equivalence. Um, so then this is some background. Next, I would like to talk about our result. So um, maybe it's a good time to pause for a few seconds and see if there's any question. Questions, anybody? Don't be shy. Feel free to ask. OK. <laughs> it seems there's no questions so far. So um, next, let's talk about our result. So in GWX result, their equivalences, they prove the equivalences for the cellular module category. And that work is over a base field of complex numbers. And it's natural to think about uh, how can we generalize the same. And there are different directions in which we can generalize that too. So first, because their work is over uh, base field C, we can ask if we can generalize that to some other base field. And the second thing is that they look at the cellular category. And of course, the cellular things, they are enough for computational purposes, but still we want to ask if we can prove this theoretical equivalence result in some larger category, which does not include just a cellular part, but also include non-cellular part. And the third thing is that the cofibe of tau here, um, you need to p-complete everything to define that. So we wonder if we can upgrade this GWX result to an integral result without any P completion. And here is our main theorem. So uh, I need to first introduce this E. E is a, what is called exponent characteristic of 
the base field K. And its meaning is that you take characteristic of K if that is greater than zero and you take one if that is zero. And we need to invert E. So after inverting E, we have this equivalence. That is this module category is equivalent to a purely algebraic category. So I do not include uh, for description of this purely algebraic category here because it is quite tedious to write down, but we will see later what this thing is. It is, so basically it's some kind of, uh, it's a stable category of some kind of twisted pre sheaf category. Just to make things more familiar, I also record this special case that is when E is one, when the characteristic is zero, uh, so we don't need to invert E. And if we look at the cellular part, then this cellular module category, it is equivalent to the stable category of MU2 star MU co modules. And this is in a more similar form to the GWX result. Okay, so this is our theorem and our theorem generalize the GWX result in both three directions. So first we work with general base field K and the second direction is this uh, cellular versus non-necessary cellular. And if you look at the first bullet point, the first statement, we don't need to restrict to the cellular category here. Still, we have this equivalence, algebraicity equivalence. And the third direction is that um, the peak completion versus integral. So uh, though I haven't though I haven't told you what this one C equals to zero, this object is, the definition of this object doesn't involve any peak completion. And also if you look at the special case, the cellular part, the right hand side. MU2 star MU co-module, well, MU2 star MU is a integral version of BP2 star BP. If you P completed both, then you get an isomorphic half, you get a half algebra, a half algebraic isomorphism. And as um, we can expect it, uh, we can expect when the base field is a complex number and everything is P completed, then this recovers GWX. And here this one C equals to zero, it plays a role of cofab of tau. And now what this object one C equals to zero is, it is a zero truncation with respect to the child T structure. And here is the definition of child T structure. So this T structure, it's greater or equal to zero part is uh, generated under co-limits and extensions by these tone spectra. So the base of that tone spectrum, the base of that bundle is smooth proper scheme and a smooth proper variety. And um, C here is a virtual bundle. And it's a small equal to zero part is defined by the second axiom of T structure. That is everything uh, the map out of greater or equal to zero part to negative one translation of small equal to zero part is always zero. So basically I take everything that has that property and put that into the small equal to zero part. And uh, okay. And uh, later I will use the um, terminology child heart or um, this notation with C heart as a superscript this is the heart of this T structure that is the intersection of the greater equal to zero part and small equal to zero part. Just a quick question, Hannah. If you, so I think this definition makes sense for more general base schemes. Is there any reason for restricting to fields here? Is it a... Yeah, it works for more general base schemes, but um, in later in our um, in, in our well proving that equivalence we need to, um, for example, we need to use some result about the algebraic cobordism spectra. And yeah, to prove the equivalence, the definition works over general base scheme, but 
to get the equivalence result, we need to work with a uh, field. I see. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Notation okay. question. Uh -huh. In your chow heart, you've got a C before the heart. Before this C seems to have been just an index, does that mean there's a family of stable hearts? Uh, sorry, I can, can you say that again? You I... see in your notation for stable heart, the chow heart. Yes, C. C heart. Is that C different from the C in the, in the indexing? So this C, these three C here, uh, uh, the first letter for chow. So because SHK without C heart, I think that is some people use that for the home to PT structure on the stable, motivic stable category. And to distinguish both these two things, we use add a C here for chow. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Okay, so yeah, so this is the definition of chow T structure. And um, I include an example here about uh, some familiar things which can be think of, which can be thought of as ton spectrum. That is when this vector bundle is a, a trivial bundle of rank N and can be negative, then the ton spectrum over uh, of these trivial bundles over a point or spec of K, it is actually these bi grade spheres as 2N N. And an immediate consequence of this example is that if we take an object which is in uh, Charles smaller equal to zero part, then we have that it's by graded homotopy groups. It is concentrated in S minus two W smaller equal to zero. And this is because of relevant spheres there or in uh, child greater equal to zero part. And later I will refer to S minus two W as child degree. It will appear uh, again and again in this talk. So this immediate consequence tells us how homotopy groups interact with child structure. If we replace homotopy groups with MGO homology, then actually we can see a closer connection. So this is mm, the following result. So MGL is the notation for the algebraic cobordism spectra. And uh, yeah, so we showed that this, we show this proposition, the proposition says that if X is in the child heart, so it's in the intersection of greater equal to zero and small equal to zero part, then it's MGO, by greater MGO homology, it is concentrated in child degree zero. If you, so this proposition, if you think about the Posnikov T structure, uh, on the classical stable homotopy category, then by replacing homotopy groups with MGL and replacing well the degree, the, the single grading with child degree, then this is something, um, something similar here. This proposition is something similar here. Um, but however, the, the, the inverse, the inverse of this, well, the opposite, the inverse of this proposition is not true. That is, the child T structure is not fully determined by it, by the MGO homology of the spectrum. And there are basically two reasons. One is that, so MGO homology, or equivalently, this is pi star star of uh, spectrum smashed with MGL, it, does not, because pi star star does not detect a uh, weak equivalence if we consider including non-cellular things. This is not enough to determine the home topic type of a spectrum. So that is the first reason. And the second reason is because of the existence of infinity connective objects in the child structure. If we restrict to the cellular case, then uh, these two, problem does not exist and the inverse will be true. And anyway, uh, yeah. Uh, on another question, what's an example of X, an element in the in the this heart? 
what is an example of a element in char hard right. so yeah so for example well what we know about mgl homology uh, for example if we take the p complete sphere then we know that uh, I'm thinking about base field R or C or finite fields. If we take um, MGL homology of the P-complete sphere, then you can see that it has nothing that is in negative child degree, but it has a positive child degree elements. So the motivic sphere, it is not in heart, but we know it is in a child greater or equal to zero. And the examples I, I, so so far the examples I met with uh, or um, similar things, you have something in child greater or equal to zero part, and then you take truncation to get something in child heart. So I don't have a, a natural example without any truncation. Okay, fair enough. Thank you. Oh well, well actually I think I have. If you take the if you take the um if you take the c motivic case then you caution out tau you caution out the element tau then uh, that's that's concentrating degree zero and the concentrating child degree zero and if for example you take the um r motive case then you caution out i think you need to caution out tau first and then row uh yeah then you also get something concentrating degree, child degree zero, and that's a hard object. But these two examples, they're actually the truncation of the sphere. Okay, wonderful, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks for the question. Okay, so this proposition tells us how the MGO homology connects um, the child T structure. And because we have this cl closed connection, we can consider the adams noikov spectral sequence. And it's just like the classical adams noikov spectral sequence, but you need to replace um, MU with MGL, which is its motivated counterpart. Because this bi-graded uh, stuff, the X, the E2 page is tri-graded and it converges to the bi-graded homotopy of the MGL neopotent completion of the motivic well, this motivic spectrum X. So now let's suppose X is in the child heart. And because of this proposition, the only possible, the only possibly non-trivial uh, things in this object is in by degree two star star. So we can simplify in such cases when X is in child heart, we can simplify the E2 page and write it as the spy graded x instead of a tri graded thing. Um, here we also use the fact that we have a half algebraic isomorphism between MU and um, MGL. And after we write this, write it this way, this is not only converges to but actually an isomorphism. So another way to say that is if X is in the child heart, then it's Adam's Noikov spectral sequence collapses and there's no room for extensions. So the E2 page equals the bi-graded homotopy groups of the neopotent, MGL neopotent completion of this of X. And actually when X is in child heart, you don't, um, you, you do not only compute it's MGL neopotent completion. Actually, you compute the spectrum or the bi-graded homotopy groups of the spectrum itself. So we showed that if X is in child heart, then X and its neopotent completion, they're pi star star isomorphic. So we have that the E2 page equals the pi star star um, of the neopotent completion and also the pi star star of X itself. And this theorem tells us, well, this theorem is key in our proof of the equivalence result. This theorem tells us that uh, if we know the MGL homology and comodal structure on a spectrum X, then we can use this to compute, to determine its bi-graded homotopy groups. Okay. <clears throat> So here is a sketch of the proof. 
we use barbeck lewy theorem to prove the equivalence. So we look at this junction, the free forgetful junction between the um, truncation of the sphere modules and also the truncation, there was truncation of MGL modules. And every time we have a chunk, uh, have an adjunction, we can compose them and get a comonet. Here we get this comonet C, um, MGL C equals to zero module. And the free functor, it factors through the category of C co-modules. So we can look at this arrow and we can put a symmetric monoidal structure and also T structure, um, the category of C co-modules to make this functor symmetric monoidal as well as T exact. So basically the um, structure on both hand side, they are compatible. And then we look at, we check that in barbeck lewy theorem, the conditions are satisfied. So it applies and it tells us that we can get some bounded equivalence between these two categories. And here the subscript here and M here, they denotes, um, so you're truncated in this range greater or equal to N and smaller or equal to M. And here we require that M is finite but there's no requirement on N. And so basically this is saying that um, this bounded equivalences, these bounded equivalences, they're true as long as you are bounded from above. So with these bounded equivalences and uh, essentially by the definition of this stable C comb modules, we can extend the bounded equivalences to the larger, the entire category and get this equivalence result. So this is an outline and I would like to zoom in to this step, this barbeck lewy theorem step. The barbeck lewy theorem, um, to apply that theorem, there are two things to check. One is that you need to check the free functor preserves totalization and totalization exists and uh, preserved by the free functor. And I'm not going to details about this step because um, basically this is when bounded from above the totalization, they behave like finite, finite limits for homotopy objects. And the next, an another step is that you need to show that the free functor is conservative. So here we want to show the free functor that is matched with MGL. It is conservative when you have this bounded from above condition. So uh, to make things easier, we can first look at a child home to be object X. So child home to be object means that you are, um, your X is um, greater or equal to N and smaller or equal to N. So suppose X is, has a, uh, we have this assumption that X match MGL is zero. Then to prove conservativity, we need to show that X is actually zero. If we work in the cellular case, then uh, we can prove X is zero by computing its bigraded homotopy groups because bigraded homotopy groups in the cellular case detect weak equivalences. So if we can show everything is zero, then that shows X is zero. But uh, because here we also include the non-cellular part, so that does not work. And the fix for that is we look at maps out of not only the bigraded spheres, but also tone spectrum. And we use that to detect equivalences, weak equivalences. And this is because after we inverting E, um, tone spectrum, they form a set of home generators. So uh, if we compute all maps out of tone spectrum, that's enough to detect equivalences. So we look at, we compute these things, maps out of tone spectrum. And by duality, we can put the tone spectrum on the first position to the second position. That is compute the bigraded homotopy groups of X smash tone spectrum for, or tone spectrum. And this here, because we are computing now uh, bigraded homotopy groups, we can use the adam of spectral sequence that I talked about in previous slides. That is, um, 
if we know the MGL homology of this thing, then we know what the pi star star of that is. And by the assumption, the MGL homology of this thing is zero. So by Adam's Noyko spectral sequence, this is zero. And that's true for all I and or tone spectrum. And um, we did use that X must be zero. So this is for child homotopy object X. And now for a general object, we can chop it up into a child homotopy objects. So look at each truncation and assemble them. But here we need to uh, take care of things that is possibly negative in negative infinity and also things that is in the positive infinity. For child T structure, there is no negative, no negative infinity um, child objects. So no child infinity co-connective objects, but there is possibly, you, you can possibly have a child infinity, child infinity connective objects. That is something lives in um, positive infinity child degree. So we need to add in this condition to bound everything from above. If we have this condition, then we don't need to worry about these objects. And smash with MGL becomes conservative. Okay, so this is uh, the barback lewis theorem part. And after that, we now have an equivalence between this module category with the stable category. And up to this step, we have already shown that this category is some algebraic category. It's isomorphic, it's equivalent to the derived, some form of the derived category of an abelian category. Um, <clears throat> so the next thing is that we would like to get a explicit description of the right-hand side, how to describe this stable category. And for that, we need to analyze the C module, C co-monad action on MGL C equals to zero modules. We analyze that um, the heart object. So here, this notation is a, a child heart, the, the heart of the induced child T structure on MGL C equals to zero modules. And this is actually equivalent to the abelian pre sheaf over MGL P motives. So um, here, this notation P and MGL denote the category of graded, graded MGL P motives. And this equivalence is given by this arrow. And here, for an object in this category, you can either think of it as a variety or you can take the suspension spectrum of a variety and smash with MGL to make. Uh, MGL C equals to zero module. And that's what, uh, how to make sense of this notation here. Okay. And we analyze the C action on the value of these pre sheaves So if we have a pre sheaf and for a random object in this Q motives category, we think about what C, um, of C X on F of X is. So F of X by this equivalence, by this arrow here, we know that F of X, it has some MU star module structure. So it makes sense. So the right-hand side, this expression makes sense. And actually C X on F, F of X is MU star MU smash over MU star with F of X. So that is on the objects. And we also need to take care of uh, on the morphism. That is when we have a graded MGL correspondence from X to Y, what this C action is. So CF is, this is just CF of Y and this is CF of X. CF is a um, arrow between these two objects. And you may expect that the action CF is given by pulling back on the second factor, but that is not the case. So it is the correct answer is that it's given by this expression where 
uh, this expression is related to the co-modification of F. Um, this co-modification here, uh, we have the co-modification on F because F is a MGL correspondence, or alternatively, you can think of it as an element in the MGL homology of X cross Y. So it has a structure of MU star MU co-modules and you can take its co-modification. And the MGL correspondence, the C action on MGL correspondence is given by this expression. Okay, so with these um, C actions, we can write out the char heart. The heart object is um, the following data. So first you need to take that representable pre-sheaf. So you have a pre-sheaf in this category. And then because the C action, how it acts on the object, you have MU2 star, oh, MU2 star MU co-module structure um, f of x, and the co-module action is given by um, this notation delta f comma x. And also we have this compatibility uh, diagram which corresponds to what we just analyzed the co-module action on correspondence. So if we have a MGL correspondence, then that gives um, this map between f of y and f of x. And if we look at its action on c, c f of y and c f of, c f of y and c f of x, then it's given by first you take um, the co-modification of alpha and then you take the pullback. And here, because, because of this arrow, this is not alpha star, but delta alpha star. Because of this, it does not, the entire thing does not make a pre sheaf of MU star MU co module. So that's why uh, previously I said it's some kind of twisted pre sheaf. And we thought about calling it a twisted pre sheaf, but later we decided that's not a good name. But anyway, this is a description of Cha Hart. Okay. Um, yeah, so next, uh, the thing I would like to, that's a proof. And next, the thing I would like to talk about is because we work in general base field. So uh, it's natural to ask when field extension is involved, what happens? For that, I need to introduce the W cellular category, the concept of W cellular category. So W, it is a set of smooth proper schemes containing spec of K and it's closed under finite products. And W cellular category is um, denoted by SHW cell and it is generated under co-limits and dissuspensions by the tone spectrum. But here we require that the base of these bundles are in the set W. And also we can simply define the a W cellular child T structure. It's greater equal to zero part is given by, well, you generate everything under co-limits and extensions by the same set of tone spectrum. And here are two main examples. So the first example is that when W is just spec of K, then um, the tone spectrum, there are bi-graded spheres to N, N. So this is just the ordinary cellular category. And the second example where field extension is involved, that is when L over K, this is a finite field extension, then we can take W to be this set. It is back of L prime and L prime is a sub extension of L over K. So when field extension is involved, this actually um, connects to equivalent theory for group G, where G is a Galois group of our finite Galois extension. Um, because it's equivalent, so MU2 star MU, we need to replace that using the equivalent counterpart that is a constant Mackey functor or Mackey functor. So the notation MU2 star MU with the underline, this is the constant Mackey functor with respect to group G. And the theorem becomes, um, well, in this form, the module category 
of course, we need to uh, invert E both hand side. The W cellular module category, it is equivalent to the stable category of underlying MU2 star MU co modules. So this is um, what the result is when the field extension is involved. And if we look at what happens um, in these two examples I just talked about, when the field extension is trivial and G is just a trivial group, that is a cellular case, then, well, the, yeah, the W cellular, W cell here, the W cellular category is just a normal ordinary cellular category as we just saw in the previous slides. And this is the serum becomes the the special case which I um, which I shown in the main serum, the second case, the second statement in the statement of the main serum in previous slides. And another example that is uh, related to work by Buckland, Buckland, Han, and Singer is that when the field extension we're looking at is R and C, and G is the group of C2, the cyclic group of order two, and when everything is peak completed, then the left hand side, this is what Berkland Han Singer they call Argentate category. And their work, um, in their work, they obtained this same result in this special case of P completed and CR case. Okay, so this is some properties, uh, proof sketch, and then everything about our this result. And that's theoretical. And now I would like to talk about computations. So I will focus on, I will see. So in my mind, I'm always thinking about our motivic. And here is how this result applies to computation. The goal is similar as in the GW case, the goal is to use that to analyze Adams differentials. And here I pick complete everything without any notational change. And the philosophy is the same, but we are looking at a larger uh, diagram here. So this is the Posnick, dual Posnick curve tower with respect to the child T structure. These pieces, the truncations, and these pieces there, the child connective covers. In GWX, the map between um, the atom spectral sequence of the sphere and the atom spectral sequence of cofaptal actually appears here, this bottom arrow. So this is a sphere and this is in the GWK, GWX case, this is cofaptal. And here we do something similar. We take the atom spectral sequence of this tower and get a tower of maps between atom spectral sequences. And for example, if we look at this piece, if we look at this piece, then under this algebra city equivalence, we can translate its motivic atom spectral sequence to a spectral sequence in the algebra city category and compute that algebra spectral sequence there and pull back the differential information to the motivic sphere. And because we have higher towers, we can also do that for this piece. This is as in the Posnick tower, this is some suspension of a child heart object. And we can pull back, well, compute the corresponding algebraic spectral sequence and pull that back to this piece here. And then we need to uh, take one more step that is push down the uh, differential information to the bottom object that is a multiplex sphere. So here is a summary. We first take the algebraic input from object in this column by this equivalence result. And then we put that back to things in this column and then push down to the sphere. So um, next I would like to take a closer look at how this translation between hard objects and uh, BP, well, and the derived category, the stable category, how that translation goes. So under the equivalence, remember we talk about the theorem that if you are in child heart, then your MGL homology is concentrated in child degree zero. And because when P complete, 
adopted. So we replace MGL with BPGL. And this, this, that serum is what we, is exactly what we are seeing here. That is the um, child zero truncation, zero child truncation translate to the coefficient rate of BPGL that is concentrated in degree, child degree zero and the first truncation translate to things concentrating child degree one and similar for later pieces. So in other words, this tower, each truncation after this translation, it's like we are filtering the coefficient rate of BPGL by child degree, by degree S minus two W. And now let's look at a more specific case. When K is C, complex numbers, then we know that for P-completed BPGL, its cohomology, its coefficient ring is the classical BP uh, joined with tau. And tau is in degree zero, negative one, so it's in child degree two. And um, everything else in BP, these VIs, they live in BP star, they're in child degree zero. So if we count what we can see at each child degree, then that is for odd degrees, we have zero and for even degrees, we have suspension of the classical BP. So this is a C motivated case. And the R motivated case seems a bit different. Um, the R motivated case, we have one more generator, which is called rho, and it's in by degree negative one, negative one. So the corresponding child degree S minus two W is one. And we have odd uh, pieces. So for example, the zeros piece, it's still BP star because since concentrated in child degree zero of the thing, it is BP star. And um, the first child, sorry, the first child piece, the first piece, it is because rho is in child degree one. So everything, um, because rho is in child degree one. So um, things that has a rho there, they're in child degree one, and that is BP star quotient two. Um, this question two happens because I did not write down what relation is, but we have two times rho is zero. And similarly for child degree two, we can uh, read of from the coefficient rate of BPGL, what is the corresponding piece there. So that is BP star quotient two index over rho square, which is in child degree two. And here are the towers. So the C motivic tower, you will see that each level it's happening alternatively. You have BP star, zero BP star, and also zero BP star. And for the R motivic, it's different. So the bottom level is BP star, and then you have BP star quotient two, BP star quotient two, and also the higher pieces, you will see more and more BP star quotient there. And the point here is that the C motivic, the algebraic information are the same every, every, every two level. So uh, that is up to some degree shifting. But in the R motivic case, because that each level you have different quotients. So if you uh, look at different levels and apply the Chow method, you need to run different algebraic Noykov spectral sequence. And therefore, um, in the R motivic case, you can do what you need to do more computations here. And that implies we have more information here if we look at different pieces. So this is how it helps with, how this trial method helps with um, Adam's, no, uh, sorry, Adam's spectral sequence differential analyzing. And in R motivic, we have more information here and Gordon and Jolie and I are uh, working on the R motivic computation. So, uh, well, I have, I have six minutes left. Um, so let me try to, well, uh, talk about the last part I prepared, which is another method called um, the effective slice spectral sequence method computing motivic sphere. And again, I'm thinking about R motivic sphere. 
So the effective slices, they are built out of a filtration on the stable home to be kept, the motivic stable home to be category. So you can do a formal construction and get the associated graded slices for each spectrum. And running spacework as where they studied in their paper, the slices of the motivic sphere, and they also uh, studied the spectral sequence and uh, converges, convergence issues and do computation for one line over a general base field. So its slices can be expressed using this expression. So it is the Allenberg McLean tensor with Adam Snoik of E2 page. I also write down this second line, which is a more explicit um, expression, but I recommend you not reading this because it's easier to just look at the examples. So at prime two, for example, the Adam Snoik of E2 page, it's an X. And I have these two objects and more other objects in the X. Alpha one is in X by degree one, two, and alpha two slash two is in by degree one, four. And how they uh, contribute to the slices. So first the zero slice, the associated graded slice in filtration zero, um, we have the unit element one in X and that contributes to uh, HZ or actually this is everything is too completed. So this is HZ sub two to the zero slice. And the first slice, um, because alpha one, it is in total degree two and the, by the second formula here, if you are in total degree two, then you contribute to something in the first slice filtration. So the first slice of the motivic sphere that is H of two index over alpha one. And similarly in slice filtration two, you have alpha one square as well as alpha two slash two. And one contributes to a, some suspension of HF two and the other contributes to some suspension of HZ mod four. And this difference is um, due to that alpha one square in the Adam Snoikov E2 page is the F2 and alpha two slash two in the Adam Snoikov E2 page uh, at, prime P, uh, at prime two is in Z mod four. So if we take that, uh, that is a graded slices, associated graded slices. And if we take the bi-graded homotopy, then that gives us a tri-graded spectral sequence whose E1 page is these. These things, and um, well, a good thing about effective spectral sequence is that the classes, the E one page, you can easily write out what the E one page is because we know what the coefficient ring of uh, Allenberg McLean is. So, for example, we know what coefficient ring of HF two and HZ mod four is, and by our knowledge of the motivic slices, we can write down for, for example, the filtration one slice is this slice and we take its um, coefficient ring. And it tells us that in filtration one, we will have these, these classes. And similarly for filtration two, the uh, slices are contributed from alpha one square and alpha two slash two. And we, we take the coefficient ring of HF2 and also the coefficient ring of HZ mod four. And we know that the classes in filtration two are these ones. So basically combining knowledge of slices and knowledge of cohomology for point, we know what E1 page looks like. So the E1 page is easy to write that down, it's easy, but there are two headaches for the spectral sequence. So first is that the spectral sequence is tri-graded. So each page, to draw the each page, um, we need to actually draw a, a, a 3D picture, which is not good. So the uh, solution for that is um, in the computation with um, Eva Belmont and then Isaacson, we organize everything using what is called co-weight, that is S minus W. So each page of this spectral sequence has um, infinite many pages. Um, can I take, I think, maybe two, three more minutes? No problem. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, yeah. 
and this is one headache. And the other headache is that the multiplicative structure in the spectral sequence is um, kind of bizarre. So there are error terms in the multiplicative structure. What that means? So for example, if you look at tau alpha one times tau alpha one, you may expect that equals tau square alpha one square, but that's not. You have an extra term, which is this rho times two tau alpha two slash two. And this is due to that everything is derived on the spectrum, the slices there on the spectrum level and the multiplicative structure is not, it is not fully seen by the multiplicative structure in the adams noikov spectral sequence. So this makes things more complicated, but it also makes things more interesting. And the uh, effective differentials, there are different ways to decide effective differentials. So in the RSO paper, the running space where cost fair work, they compare, so they compare the mm, slice, slices, well, the motivic sphere computation with that of KQ. And KQ, it's a uh, slice spectral sequence is very understandable it only has D1 and collapse after that. And by comparing with KQ, you get a lot of D1 information for the motivic sphere. And also in their work, they also compare with the add a periodic case to get D1 information. And their work is for general based field. It is of course hard, harder to have results over general based field but a slight drawback of that is um, it's, if you want to go beyond D1, then it's a bit complicated because, well, D1 is doable because D1 can be expressed as maps between Allenberg McLean on the spectrum level, but that does not work for D2. So if you want to consider D2 in later pieces, then um, it's best that you restrict to a specific field. So we restrict to R and we know the E1 page, we know the home topic groups of the Allenberg McLean and we can express, oh, not that. And we can express everything using the classes we just saw like in the previous page, the examples I gave. And um, for example, we can fully compute the at a periodic case um, the at a periodic case, it does not collapse that finite page. It has D1 and then D3, D4, D5. And by restricting to R, that makes computation possible. So we fully computed that and that by comparison with, um, by comparing the motivic slice with at a periodic slice that provides longer differential information. So, uh, that is comparison with other effective, effective spectral sequence. And the most important thing is that, well, we have, now we have two methods. One is a motivic atom spectral sequence. One is a effective spectral sequence computing the same thing. And the good thing about that is you can compare these two methods and try to use information from both and complement each other. So another direction we're looking into is that we compare the effective computation with the atom spectral sequence computation and guess the differentials. And then with these differentials from comparison with atom spectral sequence, we use multiplicative structure to generate more differentials and to compute, try to compute the R motivic sphere in larger range. So this is also work in progress with um, Belmont, Eva Belmont and Diane Sasson. Okay, sorry for uh, going over time. So this is what I want to talk about and thank you. Thank you, Hannah. It was a very wonderful talk. Let's uh, give Hannah a round of applause, everybody. Maybe I can ask the first first uh, question. So of the reels, uh, how, how many stems I, have you been computing? So the R motivic, well, actually this is embarrassing, but the Dan, Dan and uh, Eva, they have R motivic 
computation using atom spectra sequence, but not uh, this method. They use the row box time to compute the uh, R motivic atoms, and the input comes from the C motivic atoms. And they have already computed, I think, uh, from what they posted on arch archive, they have fully determined um, up to co weight 18. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we haven't, <laughs> we haven't get past that point, but we're, we're, yeah, we're doing that, we're trying. I think that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? No, doesn't seem to be the case. Well, then let's thank Hannah again for her talk. And come back.